this is even broader than that. I'm reading the paper today that in California, you know, they've got these fiscal crisis and they can't make a budget reconciliation. They keep passing by the legislature, signed by the government, and they increase taxes and cuts the spending. One of the coastal limitations on some raises for union members, the Obama administration, is taking $6 billion away from them. Stimulus money is conditioned on changing that aspect of the cuts to union members. That's just a wall exercise in political power. So my question is, much broader than just this issue here are, are we willing to go and join the other states and try and propose some sort of federalism that will stop them from all of this power? Well, we, we have a... We have a uh, we have a good federalism amendment already in the United States Constitution, which Congress doesn't pay any attention to. So I, I think you know, the first thing we need to do is is have a discussion in our country about what the founding fathers intended the role of the federal government vis-a-vis -vis the states to be. Because you know, there's no question we were invoking the name of Mr. Jefferson earlier, and if Mr. Jefferson and Mr. Madison and and, you know, Mr. Henry and all those great patriots that helped create this country were here today and saw the role the federal government was playing, I think they would be shocked and dismayed because that is never the role that they intended the federal government to play. But the, well, you know, the, the, my view is that you change the hearts and minds. You know, that's where I think, uh, you know, we, we saw a good example of what can happen there with these tea parties. You know, I think what you saw was a lot of regular folks showing up saying, look, we don't mind paying our fair share of taxes for legitimate government programs, but when you're taking 40% of our money and still wanting more, we do object to excessive taxation. And when you look at every major movement in this country, it has not started from the top down. It started from the, from the bottom up. And I think what you got to do is change the hearts and minds of people, and that's where we need to have these debates. But let, let me just let me just uh, say one thing about one part of your, your question there. You mentioned the fiscal pressures that many states are under. Don't anybody in this room think that the fiscal, fiscal pressures that Virginia's under have gone away? They have not gone away. If you remember in the in the General Assembly session last year, the governor finally fessed up toward the end of the session and told us that we had a $3.7 billion budget shortfall, which folks like me had been saying for about a year. And he finally got around, actually it was even, I was saying three and a half billion, it was even a little worse than I thought that it was. That budget shortfall hasn't gone away. You know, the governor had proposed reducing it through a number of, of budget cuts, which I thought was the right approach. But when all this magic money came floating down from Washington, D.C., most of those holes just got filled with the magic money. The shortfall didn't go away. It was just filled on a temporary basis. But when the magic money goes away, and it will go away on September the 30th of 2011, that $3.7 billion budget shortfall is still there. Now, Governor Keene is not going to talk about that until after the November election. But the next governor, whoever it is, is still going to have to fill that $3.7 billion budget shortfall in the second year of the next biennium. In fact, my friends, it's even worse than that because the budget in the current fiscal year that starts July 1 is only balanced because it assumes revenue growth of 4.5%. Now, if anybody in this room thinks our economy is going to be growing at 4.5% on July 1, you're doing the dance of the sugar plum fairy because it's not going to happen. So when we go back in January, whoever the next governor is, is probably looking at a budget shortfall of four to five to six hundred million in the current fiscal year, plus the three point seven billion dollar shortfall that didn't get corrected in the budget this year. Now, if Bob McDonald and Bill Bowling are responsible for putting those budgets together we're going to adhere to a simple principle. You can't spend more than you make, all right? The problem, the problem is not a lack of money, it's a lack of fiscal discipline. And we're gonna balance the budget by doing what families have to do and businesses have to do, by reining in spending and spending within our means. But I will assure you that if the other side is in charge when we go to Richmond, I mean, what have you heard them say? Think about, well now, a couple of them, Brian Moran, for example, he makes no bones about the fact that he'll raise taxes. 
Now, the huckster, self-described huckster, you know, think about what he says. He says, well, I don't think it's any time to raise taxes until the recession passes. Now, what's that mean, my friend? You know what that means. Then let me interpret that for you. That means I won't raise taxes until the election's over. That's what Warner did, and that's what Kane did, and that's what they'll do. As soon as the election's over, then you're going to hear them say, oh, well, we can't possibly balance the budget by reigning in spending. We've got to go out there and raise taxes. The last two have done it. They said they wouldn't raise taxes, and they get elected and, and raise taxes or try to raise taxes, and they'll do it too. So that's why this issue about fiscal integrity is so important. You know, we need to, to get folks focused on that. And the mantra that we're trying to get across is that the problem in Richmond is not a lack of money, it's a lack of fiscal discipline. We've got the money to do the things that government needs to do and do them well. We just can't try to be everything to everybody at the same time. Let me just close, because I want you all to go knock on doors. But let me just close on this point of reminding you of a couple great quotes. Um, my second favorite quote of all time is from Margaret Thatcher. Y'all remember Margaret Thatcher? Thatcher said, socialism is a great form of government until you run out of somebody else's money. All right? I remember that. And my favorite quote of all time from my favorite American president of all time, Ronald Wilson Reagan. You know, Reagan said this. He said, the problem with government spending is it's like a newborn baby's digestive tract. It has an insatiable appetite at one end and no responsibility at the other. 